Well, I think the whole country learned from Katrina that animals have to be included in disaster response. Everybody saw the picture of the little boy that had his dog snatched from his hand, from his arms, standing outside the bus because the dog was not allowed on the bus, the boy was. And the picture of him screaming on national news for his dog that ran off down the street, unacceptable. That's bad for human health, mental health human safety, it's bad for the animals. So that kind of stuff can't happen again. And we started thinking about what we needed to do in Kansas. The Kansas State Animal Response Team, or Kansas SART, was formed around 2005. It's a nonprofit organization which relies entirely on private donations and grants. The primary purpose of Kansas SART is to provide search and recovery and shelter and treatment for all animals affected by a disaster. Their coordinated response protects the safety and health of humans and animals, minimizes breakdowns in emergency evacuation efforts, and decreases the diseases which can be spread by animals during a disaster. I think uh, for years we overlooked something that was extremely important. Um, we as emergency managers were, you know, why, why didn't people leave when they were asked to evacuate? or? or uh, why, you know, why did things happen the way they were when they were at shelters and things like this? And, and we kept hearing, well, I couldn't take my pets with me, so I wasn't going to leave them at home. And, and we know that in disasters, we've lost people for that reason. They're an integral part of the response team. We have a lot of folks and victims out there, for example, in a tornado, their home's destroyed, and they have pets and a lot of them are very reluctant to leave those particular areas or evacuate uh, a particular area if needed because they're worried about their pet and they want to make sure their pet's cared for. We used to say, leave your animal at home with three days worth of food and water. And we found that people were sneaking back across uh, the, the quarantine lines or the police lines in order to go rescue their animals. Kansas SART is not itself a direct response organization, but rather is a private nonprofit group which organizes, trains, and facilitates mutual aid from the various animal response teams across the state. All animal response team members are strictly volunteers, and they fall into two distinct categories. Those who are boots on the ground during a disaster, and those who work in communities year-round to educate and inform. We have the disaster responders that go through some pretty heavy training to be on our team. They have to take the core requirements, the incident command classes, the pet first aid, the human first aid, the psychological first aid, because we want them to know how to handle themselves in a disaster situation. Volunteer animal responders come from all walks of life. They're veterinarians, vet technicians, vet assistants, lawyers, CPAs, doctors, almost anyone who has the passion to serve animals and people in a disaster setting. Animal response teams do not self-deploy. They are requested strictly by the emergency manager. Upon arrival at a disaster, the first order of business is to establish an animal shelter area in an available building. We bring, we have trailers that are called companion animal mobile equipment equipment trailers that are uh, fully equipped with everything we need to house animals. We can house probably 50 to 100 animals out of any given trailer. The task then is to begin the search for animals and one of the ways in which animals are most quickly recovered is through EMS teams. We can direct them and communicate to them this, this family has pets or a pet that needs to be taken care of. They can, they can secure the pet and make sure the pet's getting what it needs during that particular incident. And that usually puts the family member at ease knowing that that's going to occur. Which in turn allows EMS and other responders to continue with their task of caring for the humans. And we recognize that the, the human first responders need to be there first. They have to take care of the humans first, and we can help them do that. It's not just owned pets that need to be recovered and sheltered. Stray animals pose special risks to humans and other animals alike and are housed separately. Lots of diseases, zoonotic diseases are what we call those, that can be transmitted from animals to humans, humans to animals. Uh, we worry about rabies, we worry about intestinal parasites. Leptospirosis is a bacterial organism spread through urine of infected animals. Upon admission to the shelter, animals are examined and treated for injuries or sickness, as well as being identified and tracked. 
We have the patient tracking system, which we could use to barcode an animal, put an ID collar on an animal, link that barcode to a human for phone number or to a barcode on a human um, wristband. And so we could always keep track of where that owner is or who that owner is. Animals are often sheltered as close to the human shelters as possible, which is a tremendous benefit to humans and animals alike. Mental health is huge. Um, uh, the Calm Care and some of the mental health providers have been hugely supportive of us because they recognize the human-animal bond. They recognize that people fare better during disasters if they're allowed to have their animals with them. If they can shelter right next door to their dog and go back, if I can be next door to my dog and go next door and pet my dog, feed my dog, take my dog for a walk, I'm going to be a much calmer human being. And that dog's calmer too if their human being is around. People think of a pet shelter as, you know, a, this, this dirty, disgusting place that smells and things like that. And really, anyone who's ever seen these animal response teams operate know that that is not even close to the case and that they provide such a, a clean environment and you know we've gotten feedback that after the sheltering process is finished and we've gone through and cleaned up a lot of times the facility is left in better condition than what it was when they left. Compared to other ESF-8 partners, the Kansas State Animal Response Team is a fairly new organization and is constantly looking for ways to improve and grow. In the future, they'd like to be able to address dealing with livestock and different species. For now, they want to get the word out how important it is for animal response teams to become involved in a disaster right from the start. We don't want to be thought of three days later after a disaster when animals are running all over the place or sick and people say, oh, well, we need somebody to take care of those animals. Ask what we need, you know, include us in the daily briefings. Make sure that we, that we are part of the process because we're here to help. We, we know what we're doing. We just need to be allowed to do it. We would like ESF-8 partners to remember that we can make their jobs easier and we can provide for human health and safety. We can help them help people by helping animals. To learn more about the State Animal Response Team and their response capabilities in a disaster, please refer to the resources that are provided with this video.